I'm John McNamara, Information Architect for IBM Messaging, and I'm here today with Paul Tetheridge. Hello, Paul. How's it going? Hello, John. How are you doing? I'm grand, thanks, buddy. Now, I know today you're going to give us some uh, some heads up on the interoperability between WAS and MQ. What sort of things are you going to be talking about today? That's right. So what I'm going to do today, John, is show you uh, a bit of a demo between uh, or of MDBs, Message Driven Bean Applications, getting messages from, from MQ. Um, so we'll have a demo showing um, an MDB running, getting a message from MQ, and printing out the, the text of that message. Um, that'll be quite cool stuff. And what we'll then do is look at that in a bit more detail and kind of dive under the covers a bit and see what's actually going on when this operation is taking place. That sounds phenomenal, buddy. Awesome. In that case, buddy, yeah, shows the good stuff. Okay, so what I wanted to show you today, is, as I said, was uh, just a simple demo of, of a message being taken from an MQ queue and given to an application running inside of WAS. So if I go to my MQ Explorer, um, actually, I might need to share that first. Let me have a look. Uh, oh, where's it gone? <laughs> mm. There we go. Right. So hopefully now you can see my MQ Explorer. And what I have here is a queue on my queue manager called Test Queue, and that's the queue that's being monitored by my MDB application. And that's got an input count of one, so there's one thing that's currently looking or listening for, for messages on that queue, and that is my, my WAS system. So what I then have is well, if I just share something else for you now. Um, I'll share you uh, the my MDB application. So hopefully now you can see uh, the uh, my, my message driven Bean application that's been deployed into my WAN system. Um, fairly simple type of application. Just implements a, a method called on message. This is a, a message that will be a, a method. Sorry, that will be driven whenever a message arrives on on test queue on my MQ queue. And what will happen is the Application server will get the message off the queue, uh, give it to this application, and then run uh, this particular message. What we should see uh, when the message is picked up off the queue, we should see uh, the message ID. That should appear because of this line here. And we should see the, the message body um, here. Uh, and those, those, those bits of information should get written to the WAS uh, log, the WAS system out log file. Cool. Um, give it a go. So, hopefully, you can still see my MQ Explorer. Um, so, moment, um, I can just see you. If you're going to reshare your okay. Explorer, awesome. let me reshare that. Good point. So, let me reshare MQ Explorer. Right. There it is. Ta -da. Right. If I put a message here, hello, John. If I refresh Explorer, um, the message isn't on the queue. The current queue depth is zero. Um, mm -hmm. But this open input handles count here has increased to two. So something else has, has, been, has opened this queue uh, and has got the message from it. And the other thing I wanted to show you is if I now share my um, WAS systemout.log file, And reload that. Oops. Hopefully, all being well. There we go. Yeah. Uh, 11:52. Yeah, that's today. That's the right time. So there we go. So we have uh, the text there from my application. There's the the message ID of the message that was taken off the queue, and there's the the, the text. Wow! Look at that. That's <laughs> awesome, buddy. Phenomenal. Cool. So what I thought would be good to show you now um, is just kind of uh, walk you guys, just just walk you through what goes on there. Because we get a lot of customers who, who see that behavior. They run applications, MDB applications inside of their WAS system. Um, but they're not always aware of what's happening un underneath the, the surface. And it's quite often useful to know what's going on there. That's something we, we talk to customers a lot about on phone calls and, and in PMR updates and that kind of thing. Um, so what I've got is Pretty simple presentation that just kind of walks people through that. Oh. <laughs> OK, so um, what we have there is just a few simple slides that, sh that kind of walk you through the, the processing that the application server did um, when it was initially connecting to MQ uh, and then also getting that message off the queue and giving it to the application. 
Cool. So here's kind of what our what our setup looks like. On our WAD side, we have um, a few objects that we're interested in. We've got the activation specification, and we've got the MDB, and we've got something called the server session pool. We'll worry about those later on. And on the MQ side, we've got a queue manager, QM1, and a queue called test queue. So what happens uh, when the activation spec starts up? It creates a connection to MQ, so it does a, an MQ con call. It then opens the queue uh, with an MQ open, uh, and it opens the queue for, for browse. So it's not going to be doing any destructive gets here. It's just going to be doing it, doing things, um, kind of browsing operations and taking copies of messages that arrive on the queue. Once the queue's been opened, it does something called uh, an MQCB. So that's uh, an MQ verb that was added at MQ version 7, and that's used to, to register a callback on the test queue. Um, so the intention of the callback is that whenever a message arrives on test queue, um, MQ will notify the activation spec. Once all that's been set up, um, then the activation spec does something called an MQCTL, uh, MQ control. And what that does is that just, just tells MQ that the, the callback's been set up, and now the activation spec is ready to start receiving messages that arrive on that queue. So that's kind of all our initial setup phase. That's all, all what, what happens when the activation spec first starts up. Cool. So when a message arrives on test queue, when I, when I put that message onto, onto test queue, um, the queue manager will, will mark that message. It will say, right, I'm going to give this message to this particular activation spec running inside of WAS, um, and then it sends a copy of that message over to the activation spec. The activation spec gets that, that copy of the message, um, and it builds uh, an internal uh, object called a message reference that, that uniquely represents that message that's arrived on the queue. Um, and that, for those of you who are familiar with MQ, that, that message reference um, usually contains information um, related to a message token that the key manager would have generated for that message. So once that message reference has been generated, then the activation spec just throws away its copy of the message. It's not, it doesn't need it anymore. It's dealt with. It's got all the information that it needs. Cool. So now uh, the activation spec needs to start doing some processing of that message reference. So what it does is it grabs something, a server session, from this server session pool object. It takes the message reference that it just built and sticks that into the server session. It then does something quite interesting. It then uh, builds uh, a piece of work, um, which uh, it then uh, will ask something called the work manager in WAS to go ahead and run. Now, this piece of work is the thing that's going to really run the MDB. Um, and that, that piece of work contains the server session that we just got out of the pool. Uh, and this internal message reference that represents our message that we want to process. Once that, that work has been given to the work manager, um, the work manager goes off to a thread pool inside of WAS and gets a thread that it can use to run that piece of work. So for all the activation spec stuff that we do, for all the MDBs that are run as part of activation specs, uh, the thread pool that's used is this WMQ JCA resource adapter thread pool. So that's kind of the important bit. So that server session now goes and runs on, on that particular thread. Um, when it runs, uh, it will connect, create a new connection to MQ. So it will do a new MQ con. Um, it will then open the test queue. Uh, this is where the second input handle on our queue came from. So the first one was when the activation spec started up. And this one, uh, the second one is then when the server session then does the, the MQ, this MQ open prior to going to get the message. Once the MQ open's been done, then our server session goes off and destructively gets the message. It uses the information that was in the message reference to uniquely re um, identify that message, and then it will go off and do the destructive get. The key manager returns the message back to the activation to the server session. That's all fine. And then the server session um, passes that that message on to uh, my message driven beans on message method. So that, that was that bit of Java code that we looked at earlier on. Right, once our message has done its stuff, it's finished processing the message, then it returns the server session, well, it returns uh, control back to the server session. The server session puts itself back in the pool, 
um, and then it, um, and then the thread that it was running on gets put back into the WMQ JCA resource adapter thread pool. And that's pretty much it. Um, so, so while all that's going on, while the, the server session is doing the processing um, of the message, the activation spec will be just be sat there waiting for MQ to send it another message. That's worth worth mentioning. Um, something else that's worth pointing out as well, which confuses a lot of customers, um, is that once that server session has finished dealing with the, the message, once it's given the message to the MDB and the MDB is finished processing it, um, it doesn't disconnect from MQ and it doesn't close its handle on the queue. Um, so the reason it does that is for, for, for perform performance reasons, if I get my teeth in, um, um, that the next time that server session is going to be used, it has already has a connection to MQ, it already has the queue open, so it doesn't need to do the MQ con or the MQ open, it can just go off and do the destructive get straight away. Cool, uh, and that's it. Nice and easy. Wow, buddy, that sounds, that sounds absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, buddy, so much, Paul, for, for taking the time out and walking us through that. That's going to be incredibly helpful for us, I think. That's okay. Um, we'll do put the requisite links in the notes of the video so we can show the collateral that will supplement your, your awesome demonstration. And I say thank you very much, buddy, and um, take care and goodbye. Right. Thank you. Cheers, John. Bye for now. Bye.